What is going on folks? It's FX Killer here bringing you another video and today we're going to be talking about critical strike. How much is enough? How do you balance it against crit multiplier and flat damage? And how do you know which one is better at any given time? It's important to note that this video can apply to almost any video game on the market. You might have to change the equations a little bit or modify the multipliers, but generally speaking, the information in this video is true across the board. So first things first, how much crit is enough? Most people generally agree that for an effective crit build, you're going to need a minimum of 50%. Why is that? Because with 50%, you're effectively critting every other attack, and once you get above that 50%, you're critting more than half the time. Most people would accept this as a valid crit build, although in some games, you're unable to get that high, so people will settle for the one-third or 33.33%. Now, this is not counting proc builds, such as Cosprey's Discharge, or builds that rely on crits to give buffs, like Onigoroshi and her embrace. However, most of these buffs last more than a second or two, and in a game like PoE, you're gonna be attacking multiple times a second. So we have to take all of that into account. Therefore, this information is specifically for your DPS output and not for things such as discharge DPS or buff DPS. Those are things that you're gonna to have to calculate separately. But as far as true DPS, as in what your weapon or attack itself will do, this is going to be applicable. So what I've done is create a very interactive graph with equations that's going to show us exactly how much crit versus crit multi versus base damage we need to maximize our DPS. This tool is going to be best used in conjunction with Path of Building, where we can already see our crit multi and our DPS. I've taken this equation directly from the PoE wiki and sort of just rewrote it in a few ways and then modified it so we can get the values out of it that we actually want to see. So once we have both path of building and this graph open, we're going to start transferring over the numbers. So first I'll input my crit multiplier, that's 297. And let's see, we know that the Onigoroshi has a 9.5% base crit chance so we'll put that in we also need to set the crit chance and path of building says we have about a 68.8 percent chance so we'll go ahead and set this to around 625 so that our c which is our crit chance reads about 0.7 now once we have those two numbers we're going to go to the top and use our d slider here to match our input dps with that of path of building so for instance path of building says i have around 520 so we'll move this d slider until it says around 520. Now that we're all set, we'll be able to actually do some calculations. Now, what we're going to see is, as we move the Z slider over, the value for K is going to increase. And that's because, as we add more crit multi, getting more crit becomes more powerful. More crit means higher multi crits. The same can be said for the W slider and the J equation. Because, as we add more crit, you'll notice that crit multi becomes more valuable. Once our Z slider reaches around 200 crit multi, you can see that the J and K equations are almost equal. And that's because the crit and crit multi have now reached a point where they are equal to one another. This means that the only way to now raise your crit multi value is to now raise your crit. So we'll go ahead and raise that W slider. You can see that immediately our crit multi value jumps up once again. So we'll raise that up and our crit value just jumped up again and our crit multi just jumped up again. And now we're stuck in basically the optimization cycle where adding either crit or crit multi will upgrade our DPS almost the same. This is the ideal place that you want your build to be where both crit and crit multi are balanced such that increasing either of them will be a net increase in your DPS. Additionally, we have the U slider here, which modifies our base DPS, and you can see that the H value corresponding to the U slider has gained value consistently as we've added crit multi and crit, and it makes sense that by adding more base damage, our crit and multi would make that base damage more. The red line on the graph will always raise or lower 
based on the max DPS. So for instance, you can maximize all the sliders or minimize them. The red line will always move to your maximum value. Generally speaking, in Path of Exile, it's almost always worth adding crit multi or crit over a small amount of base damage. Only in cases like steel rings or large chunks of 10 or more damage are you really going to be able to compare to large amounts of crit multi or crit like 29, 30, 40, 50 percent. You might notice there are a bunch of additional equations here and those are basically just holder equations that hold a value that another equation changes. Net DPS after adding critical strike in is always going to be based on just a few things. Your base critical strike, your increased critical strike, your crit multiplier, and your base DPS. Now before you talk about attack speed or base damage, keep in mind that the term DPS has already encompassed those. So as long as we have the base DPS, base crit, additional crit, and crit multi, we can always calculate the net DPS. In conclusion, you're going to have to put in your own numbers to see where your build lies, to see how your build needs to be modified to maximize and optimize your crit and crit multi. No two builds or gear are ever going to be the same, but using this tool you can easily make small tweaks to your character to see how much 20 crit is going to get you, or how much 100 crit multi will get you, or how much adding just another 1000 base DPS will get you. I went ahead and linked this graph in the description below, so you should be able to just copy, paste, and input your character data and go. So anyway, I hope this video helped you, or at least was informative. Feel free to post any comments or questions below, and I'll do my very best to answer them. And as always, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you can, and I will see you all soon.